what a decentralized exchange is, what an aggregator is, and ultimately where things are going to be headed into the future. So, Sergey, my brother, let's do, are you ready to do I, this? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, let's. It's a let's, pleasure to be here. By the way, let, let's dive into this. So, you and I were having some conversations um, outside, and we were talking about this world of decentralized technology, or in this decentralized exchange. So, what is a DEX? So DEX, uh, we have different kinds of DEX. Uh, of course, we have auto book DEX, we have MM-based DEX, uh, like uh, based on the mathematical formula, like you see on Uniswap. Um, we have two asset uh, liquidity pairs, multiple assets liquidity pairs, and a uh, very exciting thing in, in, in a decentralized exchange is that it's permissionless and um, trustless. Um, so everyone can interact with it. It's just a program actually on a, on a digitalized computer, uh, uh, EVM-based. You know, it's interesting what you just said there. I mean, this comes from experience. How long have you been studying in this space? When did you begin? So my story started uh, back in 2017 when I started to mine Ethereum. Um, but 2018, I met my co-founder, Anton Bukov. Uh, we started to do security audits of smart contracts. Uh, I'm software engineer and architect for 18 years. Uh, actually, I had no experience with Solidity, but like, like program is program, and any software engineer should be able to, to write and read it. So, and a um, short time after that, we started to participate on hackathons, traveling around the globe, won a lot of uh, prizes. And one of the second ones we have built one inch over two nights, sleepless nights. Over two nights. Was this a binge? I mean, how did you begin? And you know, what is your process of, of creating things? So after the first hackathon back in 2018, where I met Vitalik Buterin and a lot of other superstars in, in Ethereum, uh, we spent like one night to build a small application. We won three prizes, MakerDAO, Kyber, and Set Protocol, and we recognized we can travel around the globe and do it every month. So we did it. In one and a half years, we participated on 70 or 18 hackathons around the globe. And the story looks like we come to the hackathon at Friday, so around 7 it starts. So you, are, you start to program something, what you didn't develop before. It should be completely developed uh, on a hackathon normally. And uh, you have uh, two days. And at, on Sunday in the morning at 9 a.m., you have to pitch. So, uh, yeah, and in most of the cases we didn't sleep at all, maybe one hour power nap, but uh, in the one inch case, we didn't sleep at all. It was also a funny story. I found a bat, I, I thought it's from organizer. I, I used it, so, and after three minutes, one guy came and asked what I am doing there in, in the bed of his girlfriend. So <laughs> that's why I didn't sleep at all. And yeah, you see, um, we, we didn't win anything. So normally you win uh, like uh, small, small sponsor prizes. We got like 300 bucks from ENS. I, I was able to pay the airplane tickets for me, um, but no main prizes. And uh, yeah, but at the end, you see, we have 156 core contributors around the globe uh, working on uh, decentralized services, products, wallets. Yeah, it's nice to see. So, you know, you said that while well, you built version one in a day, what version are you at right now? So, we are not versioning it, uh, it in general, I would say. It was the first approach, so we were sitting at a hackathon thinking what we should build. And uh, we came to the idea that there are a lot of liquid sources, taxes, and uh, we just wrote the algorithm which did the distribution between the liquidity sources to achieve the same rate uh, everywhere. So uh, and nowadays uh, we have more complex algorithm. We introduced uh, in, um, in November 2020 a new approach where we use multiple markets. So you exchange Ethereum to USDC by using USDT, DAI, WBTC, maybe some blue chips tokens like Uni in between. Um, so you use multiple markets for one single transaction. What is not po possible in traditional finance since uh, yeah, it's not possible to execute it atomically. So in our case, we can revert transactions if it doesn't work. Um, Talk about that a little more. 
So um, what, what I like in Ethereum, uh, from my point of view, it was built for financial instruments. So for example, we can execute a very complex uh, trade on maybe 20 liquidity sources at the same time. Uh, and if maybe one of part of the uh, uh, swap, part, I call it pipes, like it's very complex path. Um, uh, and w if one of these paths fails, we don't have to revert the whole path, we can just revert only one part. Or at the end, if it doesn't work at all, if the, maybe you, the user get less than expected, uh, the whole path reverts and the user don't lose any money, so it's uh, trustless. Kind of, uh. So then transparency, talk about that in this space. What does it look like, or I would say, what did it look like and what is required today? I mean, if you're a global regulator, and you're looking at this industry, what is it that they're looking for? And ultimately, the transparency a creator, a builder, must give. So, um, this is a special topic regarding regulators, I would say. Um, maybe I will start first with the transparency. Transparency is very important. So, uh, from my point of view, no one should trust anyone. So, in the case of FTX, which were regulated by regulators, uh, actually gambled with eight billions of US dollars of user funds because they uh, they could do that. So how my co-founder says um, always, if something can fail, it will fail. So that's why we try to build something that cannot fail. It's it's simple as possible. So um, so and um, yeah, transparency helps people to understand how that works, uh, to verify how that works. And actually, no more, no, no more is needed here in the case of uh, swaps on smart contracts. Um, regarding regulators, um, from our point of view, like DeFi should be regulated in, in different manner. Yeah, if we have a lot of this complexity, what we have in centralized entities, uh, not, not not anymore. But maybe a little bit different approach is required here. Which approach I cannot tell right now. Um, it needs maybe to dis be discovered together not just the reg regulator look on that from, uh, from the side and think, okay, maybe sh this is the best approach, but at the end it doesn't work. And, and also uh, stop the innovation. Uh, and from our point of view, innovation should be uh, pushed forward and, and uh, there, like, uh, th there should be an environment for new innovation and uh, improval improvals in uh, traditional finance. So you mentioned a name earlier, Vitalik, and you got Excited, he's that Kobe Bryant. He's that brilliant, huh? So Vitalik is a very special person. I, I spoke with him maybe 15 times, maybe more. But every time when I come, he is asking, who are you? <laughs> so uh, he's really brilliant. Uh, he had really no, a really great idea and he's uh, still there. He's pushing forward. Um, yeah, he's a genius uh, with specific approaches, uh, yeah. I would love to, to have to more possibilities to, 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 to communicate with him, but yeah, I guess the whole whole blockchain world would, would uh, like to, to do something with Vitalik. Now, excellence, because it is required globally. If you're an FI and you're looking to see who are we gonna partner with? You're a fiduciary, you're, you wanna be a custodian. You know, so talk about excellence. How do you build something that will truly give mass adoption? Because what will be required will be the standard. And the standard won't be here. The standard ultimately begins at the stars. I mean, there is a very high expectation that this space must be different than the other, remarkably better. So talk about building excellence for the future. Ooh, that's difficult. <laughs> uh, so from my point of view, our future, uh, especially also in finance, should look much more simpler than it is right now. We have a lot of intermediates which you have trust. So we have seen it with the banks, right? So Silicon Valley banks closed and a lot of uh, people lost money. Yeah? And this is very strange, very bad. And uh, um, maybe, uh, yeah, you should go different approaches, other approaches where uh, people own, own money and don't trust anyone. So, and also regarding the technology itself, uh, we can do much more efficient uh, uh, things 
uh, right now, like banks are using still Excel sheets <laughs> to exchange some 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 information um, and document some informations. But uh, they can use smart contracts and use the settlement on smart contract and blockchain uh, just to to save uh, a lot of time and have high security and be more efficient. Yeah, the way that you respond to your community for many many years, if you look at some of the big tech giants. How many of their founders have candidly even been associated at some point with getting involved? They became very detached. But you haven't. You're not hiding somewhere. You're here. And by the way, Paris, France is amazing. This is one of the most beautiful countries in the world, number one tourist destination. Um, so talk that through, kind of the way you see things. So yeah, some some founders they they just exit or just uh, try to do something different. In my case, I just do what I feel. Uh, so and I feel uh, there's a lot of room of imp improvement. We can uh, build a lot of things, uh, like everything what what uh, you see right now at under one inch was driven by feelings. I would say also the algorithm itself. I had the feeling this just splitting between liquidity source makes maybe not not, not sense just to, to let it how it is and this uh, room for improvement and I was looking for the for the improvement uh, together with my co-founder we came to the idea how to use multiple markets and how do it how do it very very uh, efficient so um, yeah yeah so as we now come down to the final few minutes team members. Um, during the, the, I would say, the period of the market being uncertain, you made acquisitions, capital. You went out and you met people, and one of them you brought on, formerly with Ripple, um, is now helping you to lead this, this FI type charge. So looking in from your perspective of being trusted, being transparent, and now having the right team, Fusion, why is that something that you're now adding to the equation, and what is Fusion? So first of all, don't trust anyone and me, especially. <laughs> Verify if you if you are using one of of uh, what our teams produce, wallets uh, or APIs or whatever, which generate specific information which you can use to interact with the blockchain. Um, yeah, don't trust. Verify. And in terms of uh, our products and the, the recent product which we released last last year, which actually was was built in 30 days. So um, our teams just uh, came to Dubai in uh, just one, one big room and they were hacking this uh, innovation, I would say, just in 30 days. Yeah. Uh, of course, we had a lot of security audits already prepared for the uh, smart contracts, but uh, most of the work was done in the last 30 days. Um, so regarding Fusion, Fusion is the next thing from my point of view. It's uh, just... We turn it around. So before Fusion, everyone was taker. Uh, when when the user did the swap, the user was, was a taker. Uh, there were some uh, vect uh, attack vectors, for example, math, like sandwich attacks. When you exchange huge amount of money, you 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 get sandwich. That's right now on Uniswap is this the case. So when you swap on a Uniswap, you get you sushi swap, pancake swap. Doesn't matter. This is kind of old approach, and we had to change this because flashbots uh, came. It's now possible to uh, um, sandwich people um, and to extract value from the transactions. We turn it around, and we introduced that the user is the maker itself. They create kind of limit order, which is based on Dutch auction. Dutch auction is uh, not linear. Uh, actually, my guys used the name. I don't like it personally, but they used Grid Kunzinjar. Uh, my my true name is Kunz. I don't know why <laughs> they use this, but anyway, I came also like an, to, to this idea by like f again feeling that okay, there's a better approach, and uh, we came to the idea that the aura is just an algorithmical aura, which contains uh, different uh, price rates, depends on the time. So at the beginning, the user uh, aura tried to get. For the best rate on the market, which is right now the, the current rate on the market without any price impact, it goes down t over time to a price impact, which would happen if you just if you do just market trade on, on, on Ethereum, for example, and it goes a little bit below to also offer arbitrage opportunity for market makers, 
and uh, together with our new staking upgrade for the one inch network and introducing resolvers and resolvers list, we uh, introduced the uh, opportunity for market makers to become a resolver, to stay in the top 10, to maintain the position by staking one inch token, by to getting delegates from users from the community. Um, to achieve best execution for the user. So user is protected from front running attacks, the user is uh, executing like trades in uh, asynchronously manner, that means you don't have to wait for the first or trade uh, to, to execute the second one, because professional market makers uh, execute you, your orders. And from our point of view, this is just a beginning. Uh, we need uh, account abstraction with similar approach that you don't do any transaction anymore. You shouldn't care as a user to have better experience, you shouldn't take care about the blockchain on which you uh, like execute something or you want to exchange something. Um, and you shouldn't be also in charge to, to send the transaction to the blockchain. It can be done by someone else who's doing it better than the, the normal user um, to achieve also, how I already said, the better user experience. This is the future from our point of view. And so take me out now for you. You've reached your greatest aspirations. <coughs> Do you stay in it? Do you continue? Or do you just become an investor in the space yourself to help some of these entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs that have that idea? Because ideas, you and I talked about, ideas are easy. Execution's hard. You've now learned through your process of what works and what doesn't work. So do you see yourself ever getting to a spot where you become a Tim Draper? So, a lot, of course, a lot of people start reaching to me if I can support them, advise them, and a lot of things. Uh, I try to help where I can, so we have a good example here with um, one of my friends um, was working with hardware uh, devices a really long time and I and Anand we had the idea about uh, the simplest hardware wallet ever, uh, which, which is not destroyable and uh, very secure and also open source. We uh, explained this idea to, to, to my friend, and now they, they, they delivered after one year on a really small amount of money uh, a prototype, which is much better than Ledger and Trezor together, from my point of view. So, and yeah, we, we, I try to help. I, I stay um, uh, with both uh, feet on, on the ground, I would say. Um, uh, and you have a yeah. grant program, the One Inch Grant program. Yes, yes, we have uh, different things. We have our independent foundation, which uh, also offer grants for startups. Uh, actually, the, the hardware wallet got the, the, the grant. Uh, also, decentralized storage, uh, DNet protocol got also a grant. Actually, they, are, they have already application uh, app store. You can, just in this manner, store files. It's really nice. Um, and also, we have our DAO, which have already 17 millions of US dollars, which can be spent for grants for building new products. So if someone would like to build anything on top of one inch network, for one inch network, or just for the DeFi, they can just share the idea and, and get uh, some funds. Um, we try also to, to support this because we know how that is. At the beginning, we, we worked one and a half years with Anton without any penny getting, getting for, for, for what we did. Uh, and the community started to, to give us. So we got, uh, I guess, 5K from Andre Cronier at the beginning. Um, uh, I was, uh, yeah, um, yeah. I, I met them recently in Dubai. I said thank you for this, and also Gitcoin grants helped us to get more contributors to to, to work on this. Perfect. So I can tell you because I've been there. If you want to learn more about One Inch, a little more about Sergey and the rest of the team, come visit them. They have a booth like literally right over there. That's it. Ten nine eight seven six. We're done, Sergey. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, yeah. thank you very much.